How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, today we're learning about our lines and angles. This is chapter three, section one, lines and angles. All right, first little guy we're gonna talk about is different types of lines. So let's pretend this is a rectangular cube. You can draw it on your paper if you like. If not, you can just sit there and think about your favorite baseball player. Mine happens to be Andrew Jones, but I'm also a Braves fan, okay? Lovely. All right, let's get started. When you have two lines, can y'all see that? Yes, you can. All right, if you have two lines and they're indicated by those, okay, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you, that means that they are congruent. That means they have the exact same length, okay? It says nothing about their, their slope, how they fall, anything except for their length, okay? It means they got the one dash through. Well, when two lines are parallel, which means they extend forever and never touch, okay? That means that they have the exact same slope. That's how you mark it. You have a little mark right there. So that's parallel. All right, lovely. Well, we're gonna say that these are parallel. We're also gonna say that these are parallel to each other, okay? All right, goody gum drops. Now, first thing we're gonna look at is parallel lines. Parallel segments, actually, since these are, since these have endpoints and they stop, and they're going to be called segments. So parallel segments. All right, we want to name a pair of parallel segments. Okay, all we do is find two segments that have the exact same slope, which are indicated by those little V marks. Okay, BE is the segment, and it's parallel to CD. Good deal. Now, when you write parallel, how you want to pair up two segments and say they're parallel. The symbol are two parallel lines in between it. So BE is parallel to CD. You don't want to know how to remember that? It's right there in the word, parallel. That's your symbol. Okay? Lovely. All right, let's go with uh, perpendicular segments. Perpendicular segments. Parallel means they go on forever and they never touch. Perpendicular means they cross and they make a 90 degree angle. Okay, it can hit like this and stop, then go through each other, they can be turned any which way. As long as that angle that they make is a 90 degree angle, which means it's like the corner of a piece of paper, okay? Now, we signify that with that little box there, okay? Now, if that is right angle, if that's 90 degrees, that means that all these are, okay? Just because they're parallel, which we'll get to that in a later section, later in this, actually, it's in this chapter. Lovely. Something to look forward to, kind of like Back to the Future 4. All right? Now, we have to lay in two things that are perpendicular. We can just go this line and this line because we know they make that 90 degree angle. So BF and FJ. And you're thinking, well, we name parallel like that. How do we name perpendicular? Just like that. It's an upside down T. It's a little line that is perpendicular. Like I've said before, math people are not super creative, okay? They just name stuff what it looked like. All right, next thing, skew. Skew lines, or segments, we'll do segments here. Skew segments, we got parallel, we got perpendicular, one of those two, and now we've got skew, which means that they don't cross, just like parallel, but they're not parallel. You're thinking, well, how does that happen? Well, you can have one going straight this way and one going straight up over here. This one's gonna go this way, this one's gonna go this way. They're never gonna cross, okay? In the imaginary world of lines extending forever, they would never cross, okay? And they might hit the Hubble telescope, but they won't cross. That was super lame, all right? So, we'll try BF. BF is our segment. Now we wanna know what's skew, okay? That means it's not gonna be this one because that's parallel. If this one, we need to have one that goes the other way. It can't be crosses, so it can't be BE, and it can't be FJ. It has to be one back here that we know will go behind it. So let's just go with GH. Another one that would have worked, CD. Okay, and we don't have a symbol as far as I know for skew. If you think of one, uh, please don't tell me because I'll feel stupid. Okay? Last thing. Parallel planes. A plane, if you remember, is like a flat surface that extends forever. A visual of this 
is like this. Two pieces of paper that extend forever and never cross. That's parallel. I'm sorry if they're bending. Just imagine that they aren't, okay? So that's parallel planes. Now, let's pick a plane. Pretty much what we're looking for are two flat surfaces that never would cross each other. It could be this side of the box, the top of the box, this side of the box. I think I already said that one, but I'll say it again, this side of the box. All right, so I prefer this one because I can shade it in and show you. Let's say the top and the bottom, okay? Those are parallel, those are planes, they'll never cross. Fantastic, so how do we say it? We'll just say plane uh, B, C, D, E and plane uh, F, G, H, J. All right, good deal. That's the first part of the three. Hope that helped. If not, well, I don't know what to say. Welcome back for part two of this section, 3-1. What we got here is we got two lines, these two, and they're crossed by this line. Okay, first thing you need to know is what we call this line. Any line that crosses two or more lines is called a trans, T-R-A-N-S, B-E-R-S-A-L. It's called a transversal, okay? You're gonna use that a lot more, but for now you need to know that's called the transversal. All right, goody gumdrops. Now, the corresponding. What corresponding means is it matches up with something else. In real life, corresponding means it matches up, okay? Same thing here. This is one section, this is another section. Pretty much, we're trying to figure out what numbers match up with the other ones in, from section to section. There's two ways to do it. One, you can look over here at this little group of numbers. Upper left corner is one. What's the upper left corner down here? Three. They're corresponding, angle one and angle three, okay? Now, other way to look at it is, some people like to imagine that you get this section, you pick it up, and stick it on top of this section. The corresponding angles will be right on top of each other. So one would be on top of three. All right, we want to do the rest of them. We know two is going to match up with four. All right, if you want to finish the other two, you can press pause and figure it out, and then we'll check it by you pressing play again. And I'm going to move on because you don't have to wait on me. You press pause. Angle five would match up with angle seven. And then angle six would match up with angle eight. Okay? So they match up with each other. Six is in the lower right, eight is in the lower right. Pick it up, set on top, six and eight are right on top of each other. Lovely. Alternate interior angles, okay? Alternate interior. That's the important part there, we know their angles. The first word deals with where they are on the transversal. Second word deals with where they are on the lines, okay? Alternate is the, the one line. Second word is the two lines, okay? So let's look at the interior. Interior we know is inside. So we know it's gonna be inside these two lines. The first word I said dealt with the transversal, alternate, which means opposite, okay, or other side, which is what this is. What would be on the other side of two? Seven, correct. Two and seven are alternate of that transversal, and they're also both on the inside. Therefore, they're alternate interior. So angle two and angle seven, and then the other ones would be six and three because they're alternate interior. Alternate exterior, same thing. First word deals with transversal, so we know they're on opposite sides of this line, the transversal. Exterior means they're outside. So, one and eight. If you want to figure out the other one on your own, you can do it while I'm writing this down. If you don't have time, press pause, because I'm about to shout the answer. It is angle five and angle four. Very good. Last thing, same side interior. Okay, that means they're gonna be on the same side of the transversal, because remember I said the first word is the transversal's location. And then the second word is the two lines. So it's inside these two lines, and they're on the same side. Oh my goodness, two and three. Okay, you don't know anything I'm about to say? It's angle six and angle seven. Booyah. That's it, guys. You're a genius. Okay, last thing, I want to do a couple examples with some little more complicated problems, okay? <clears throat> what we got here is we got three lines, L, M, and N. They're all crossing each other, okay? And then we got some angles thrown in here. What we want to do here is we want to identify the transversal, which we know the transversal from the last part is, the line that cuts the other two lines, and we also want to name what kind of angles they are, like alternate interior, corresponding, etc., and so forth. Okay, 
First one is angle one and angle five. So we find angle one and we find angle five. When you have them, they cross like this, it gets confusing because you got this extra side, okay? Trick is, cover that up. If you're not using these two angles, cover those fools up right there, okay? Now, we got angle one and angle five. What's the one line that touches both of those angles? Has to be line in. So we know our transversal is line in. We just gotta find out what those two angles are compared to each other. Okay, first thing is, look at how they are on the transversal. Are they on the same side or opposite? <sighs> opposite, that makes them alternate, okay? So we know the first word is alternate. All right, now, are they both on the inside of the other two lines? These are our two lines. We know one's on the inside, five's on the inside. That makes them alternate interior angles. That's a little sign for angles. So alternate interior angles. Okay, if it didn't make sense to you, if that didn't make sense to you, Go back, it's got the rewind on it. Three and four, okay? Angle three and angle four. Those didn't even go to other angles, okay? These are just staying together on the same section. That's not what we've been talking about the section. That's something from last chapter, okay? Actually, it's from the first chapter. When two angles are completely opposite of each other, they're called vertical angles, okay? Hopefully you remember that. They're vertical angles. Angle one and angle four, Angle one and four, we're not using these sections, so we cover this up. Okay, we'll cover that section up. All right, if you look real close, you can see exactly what I have on the board on the paper. Don't tell anybody. Okay, angle one and angle four. First thing, are they on the same side or are they on the opposite sides of the transversal? Which would have to be L. I apologize, we didn't do the transversal. That line touches both angles, therefore, transversal. All right, I'm talking fast, but guess what? You have a rewind button and you might have a slow up. I don't know. One and four, they're on alternate sides, so we know they're alternate. And then, guess what? Those are our two lines. One's on the outside, four's on the outside. They're exterior angles. Okay, and then two and angle five. Two and five, we're not dealing with this. Okay, they're on the same side, so now we know they're the same. I'm sorry, what's the dang transversal? Guess what? Line that hits both of those angles is line in. That's the transversal. Now, they're on the same side, because that's the first word has to do with the transversal, so it's same side, if I can spell correctly. And then they are on the inside, so they are interior angles. That should be enough to get you through, um, I don't know, the entire subject of geometry, so hopefully if you don't understand, hit rewind, hit pause, call your mom, I'm out.